We're now in the age of low latency, lightweight wireless mice. The Logitech G Pro Wireless set the standard, and now the Razer Viper Ultimate is contending for top spot. I already reviewed the Razer Viper, so in this video I want to compare the Viper Ultimate to the G Pro Wireless. But first in the box you get the charging dock, the mouse, and the cable. The wireless adapter is inside the mouse, which can go into the dock. And the cable is one of these smooth soft braided cables, so you could play with it wired too. Although this one is a bit thicker because it needs to charge the mouse as well. Still pretty good, I didn't mind playing with it in a bungee. Now for the comparison, let's get to the most important part, the shape. They both follow similar good mouse design principles for grip, with curved and angled sides, except notice the Viper flares out at the front. That means your ring finger gets pushed out more. However, the sides are curved inward in the middle at the grip width, which is about 5.8 centimeters, while it's about 5.9 centimeters on the G Pro Wireless, which also actually feels like it curves outward a little at the base. Overall, I feel like I can get a much better grip on the Viper. They're basically the same length. However, the G Pro Wireless is higher at its peak, about 3.9 centimeters. The Viper is about 3.75 centimeters. So if you're using palm claw or palm grip, you're more likely going to want the G Pro Wireless. If you're using fingertip or claw grip, the Viper Ultimate may be more suitable. They're medium, medium large mice, so I generally recommend them for hands that are about 19.5 by 10 centimeters. Either way, both are great shapes, it comes down to personal preference. I prefer the deeper comfort curves in the buttons, along with the overall flatter design. The G Pro Wireless feels like I'm holding a cylinder compared to the Viper. As for materials, the Logitech is all plastic, very little texture, and can be a little slippery, while the Razer has a composite of plastic and rubber on its sides. Feels great to me and apparently should last a lot longer than other mice with the rubber sides, as these ones won't fall off because they're part of the shell. Next, the weight. 77 grams without the bottom plate was really impressive with Logitech, but with or without the plate on the Viper, it's only 74 grams. These are amazing weights for wireless mice, and the build quality is solid on both. Squeezing them, there's very little flex or movement. The design teams for both have done really well. Both mice have side buttons on both sides, so these are true ambidextrous mice. But Logitech's are modular, so you can choose which side you want them on, while Razer just designed them so that they shouldn't have any accidental clicks. This makes them a little harder to press in, but for me, they're fine. Here's a listen to them. I'll just quickly say that the Logitech G Pro wireless wheel is better than my new Ultimate, which you hear there, but the old one actually sounded fine. So I may have just got a defective copy. I do like both, but I'd give the feel of left and right to Logitech, but all the other ones and the wheel, I think Razer is better. Logitech has had issues with double clicking on their mice, but Razer are now using an optical switch, so these Vipers shouldn't have that issue. And in the latency testing, it looks like the Viper Ultimate is a tiny bit faster than the G Pro Wireless. I looked through Razer's marketing and they do claim to be faster. Usually I wouldn't believe that, but it seems true in my testing too. That said, it's so slight, I doubt it's going to matter in game. It's just interesting to see and pretty cool that Razer figured out how to get lower latency. Now for the sensor, I generally don't show the sensor tests anymore because they're so good, you wouldn't know the difference. But this is a new sensor in the Viper. Like the Hero for Logitech, this is Razer's Focus Plus, or 3399. It has a bunch of extra improvements that make it the top sensor on the market from what I can see, and it's designed with wireless mice in mind. So the battery life is really good, apparently 70 hours worth. However, I only really care about the in-game tests, so let's do those. Of course it handles rocket jumps, and I can't make it lose track even swiping it as fast as I can. Even when tilting it and slamming it down, it tracks well. In the sniper test, it tracks pixel by pixel, so you should be able to do those tiny aim adjustments just fine. And it's quite smooth. It seems to handle acceleration and deceleration well, no issue there. With the liftoff distance set to 3mm in the software, it won't track on two DVDs on cloth or hard pad, but it does track on one. However, if you set it to 1mm in the software, it won't even track on one DVD. So yes, you can adjust it. No issue with latency, feels very responsive. 
And while in game, I tested to make sure there was no ghosting on the buttons either. Everything performing really well. In the line test, we see that it's all good too. The liftoff movement is okay, and there's no sensor rattle. So it's a top performing new optical sensor from Razer, no complaints from me. That said, there is a small issue that I don't want to mention in the video, because I still haven't figured out what it is. Check the description for details and let me know in the comments if you experience it at all. I'll leave an update there as well. So some people had a problem with the feet on the Viper, which may have been caused by the black dye. So they've left them white now. They glide smoothly, no issues for me on either, but these feet should feel faster than the previous Viper. Now let's get to the software. I didn't use the entire battery, so I don't know how long it takes to charge, but I'm told it's 90 minutes from 0 to 100%. Some people have mentioned that they don't like having Synapse installed, but once you set the mouse up, you can just uninstall it. It just won't store your macros on the onboard memory. It should remember everything else. And you get the usual features along with Hypershift. So with the extra buttons on the right, you can change all the others, essentially doubling the amount of buttons you have. Love this feature. I use it for multimedia personally, so stop, play, next track, and volume changes, because I'm always listening to music while I'm working. You can alter all the buttons and wheel too, and the usual effects for RGB. 5 DPI stages in steps of 50 up to 20,000 now. And you can set sleep mode and power saving mode here. And here's where you change the liftoff distance. The sensor has extra tech to automatically calibrate the distance, but generally liftoff distance doesn't bother me. Logitech is having issues with their software, but they're improving it a lot now, but I'd still prefer Synapse at this point in time. Now some highlights while I give my conclusion. I love the Razer Viper series. They're too big for me, but they're some of the best mice ever made. Personally, I prefer their shape over the Logitech G Pro Wireless, along with the features, but otherwise they're quite similar, and you can't really go wrong with either. They're both top mice and will remain so for a long time. But for top spot, my pick is the Razer Viper Ultimate. It has a better shape for me, it's lighter, has a nicer charging cable, a charging dock, better feet, better wheel, optical switches to avoid double clicks, and all the little details too. The Logitech G Pro Wireless is great, but it's also over a year old now. Razer have stepped up their game and taken competitive gaming mice to a new level. So if you want the best wireless mouse in 2019, and probably through the start of 2020 at least, I'd say this is it. Absolutely amazing mouse. Hope that helps, usual links in the description if you want to help support what I do. Big thanks to Logitech and Razer for sending these mice out for review purposes, and for including me so early in the testing process. Always nice to feel included with such awesome tech development. But the video is not sponsored, all thoughts are my own, but I was involved, which is really cool. Again, both are amazing, hopefully I made the choice easier. I think the biggest factor is just the shape. If you don't like the Razer Viper shape, get the Pro Wireless. If you don't like that shape, get the Viper. Easy. Anyway, subscribe. Like and share this video, and I'll catch you in the next.
Red wins the round. 